Correct. And, and by the way, we've always heard this in bad economic times, but the murders and the racial attacks and the craziness and people on edge, it is, I'm seeing it everywhere. And I live in the wealthiest per capita city rated by Forbes, Austin, and it's already bad here. I can't imagine uh, Southern California, Michigan, places like that, it, uh, Florida. I mean, it's going to be a powder keg. Indeed it is. And, and that's what they're counting on. And, and you know, uh, again, this whole thing is, 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 is coming, it's going to come like a tsunami. It, it's going to hit us like a ton of bricks. There's a lot of people. You've woken up a lot of people, Alex, and, and thank you for that. And, and, uh, but there are a lot of people who just have no clue, no idea. And one thing my source did tell me that I was very concerned about is the fact that, uh, you know, uh, of course, we all know about the FEMA camps that don't exist. Of course they do. They're disaster relief centers, uh, according to, uh, you know, the, their names. People, when they get hungry and, and they're unprepared, they're going to flock to these camps. And, and, and in fact, uh, there's a book called How to Kill 11 Million People. Uh, and, and the detail, it's 67 pages long. I don't, I can't remember who, who wrote it, but, but the bottom line is this. Stay there. I want to hear about sure. your source on the FEMA camps. Exactly. They Will implode do. society, like the communists always say, by design to then rebuild it. And again, the mega banks want the communism to destroy the republic to then bring in their new system of control. But that's exactly what we're talking about here. And they are really attempting to set this off. We'll get the FEMA camp information from our guest source on the other side. Stay with us. HomelandSecurityUS.com is the website. Northeast Intelligence Network CEO, Doug Hagman. All right, Doug, this is a short segment, long segment coming up, but get into the preparations, what your sources are telling you. You were getting into the FEMA camps, which they admit in the Emergency Centers Establishment Act will be the new community. They implode things, pay to ship the jobs overseas. People flood in. Then there's got to be a prison area for troublemakers in the community, protesters and people, and that's the sub-camp areas. So that's how they're going to roll these out. We already see it in California and other areas where they lock the homeless up at night. Uh, but uh, let's continue uh, breaking down what your source told you. Well, according to my source, and he said, look, the, the uh, DHS brass, they know this is coming. There's no stopping it. And it's going to be a lot easier, if possible, to um, to have these people, have people in general, masses, willingly go to these disaster relief centers for their food. Because you're not going to be able to buy food. You're not going to be able to do any banking. You're not going to be able to. I mean, we're going to be in, things are going to be in gridlock. And when when. And people get hungry, they get desperate. So they're going to go do what the government tells them to do. If there's food at these disaster relief centers, great. They're, so they're, they're counting on a lot of people to respond appropriately, to go to these centers for the food. And then in for phase one, the camps will be our saviors. Phase yes. two, take the politicals. But I'm sorry, tell, please continue. No, I mean you're exactly right. And then uh, now you've been you've been running during your program the uh, 1982 documentary uh, with Larry Grathwell saying, well, there's going to be this mass extermination of people. Ultimately, that's their plan. They're, and, and people are, are like, you know, they, this normalcy bias is taking them over. And again, I, 27 years as an investigator, I'm a hard sell on this kind of stuff. I'm thinking, wait a minute, this can't be happening. But it is happening. Everything you've said is true. What they're saying is, okay, once these people, you know, once we have them separated. Uh, and th those who don't go, there will be mass arrests. They'll be treated differently if they if they're taken anywhere at all, if they're not dropped at the end of their driveway. And uh, the bottom line is, then they're going you know going to have control of, of everything. And but 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 here, the, the, here's the key, real quickly. Here's the key. Obama does not want to relinquish power. Valerie, Valerie Jarrett does not want to rel relinquish power. Cass Sunstein, all these people, all these unappointed czars don't want to relinquish power at all and don't plan on it. So they're planning on this economic collapse, this racial divide, this economic chaos, panic, uh, riots, and so on and so forth as a, uh, a pretext to p potentially suspend the elections. We've already seen the trial balloon with Governor Susan Perdue, I believe her name is, out of uh, one of the Carolinas, talking about suspending congressional elections. They've had their eye on that. They, they're, they're looking at that, according to my source, saying, well, what was the reaction? Could this possibly be? 
Indeed. But this is what they want to do. They want to stay in power one way or another. And Obama knows that his numbers aren't good. Obama knows that satisfaction is bad. But he, but again, he, and one of the, the things that my source did, did say, and he's experienced in, in profiling, by the way, um, the forensic profiling, he says, does this look like a man who uh, expects to be uh, going anywhere after, after this election? Of course not. I mean, look at the lavish, lavish vacations that they're taking. Look at the way he's uh, spending money. I mean, $5 trillion uh, he's added to the debt. It, it's just incredible. So we, we can see this coming. According to my source, DHS is aware of this and uh, not stopping it. Instead of not stopping it, they're facilitating it. And by the way, I was told this a year ago by sources, and then now it's been in the news that they gave them, what, $3 billion of additional funding to set up TSA all over the country from the beta test they had going in 10 states at the time. And now we've confirmed through other sources that these big armored lockers with the riot gear, the weapons uh, are being delivered and they're being cashed. I've talked to military, uh, these giant processions of, of, of Bradley fighting vehicles, uh, freshly painted and ready for the U.S., are being cashed at secondary armories, because the system's afraid the public may take the regular armories. I've talked to military that uh, whenever Texas was about to throw the TSA out, which the feds know is their vanguard takeover arm uh, that will expand out onto the streets, their, their little administrative tattletale squad, that uh, on top of that, uh, that the military was standing by to invade Texas, and then it came out they were going to have a blockade of the airways. I mean, this is already happening. They're already geared up. And people don't understand this. You're exactly right. I mean, and then we look at the uh, the attempts to control the internet, ACTA, CISPA, uh, you know, SOPA, and so on, PIPA. Look, uh, this is all about control and and specific control. And I understand we're up against the yeah. Stay there. Wow. Sure. Uh, yeah. But can we expose this and have them back off? Is the question. We'll be right back with our guest. Doug Hagman, I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv. For now, we're on the air. We're going to be taking your phone calls for Doug Hagman, director of the Northeast Intelligence Network. And look, all I know is I've studied history, and this is repeating itself, and government doesn't care anymore. Government doesn't care if Corzine steals billions before anybody would have gotten in trouble. They don't care if hand grenades get shipped to Mexico and they get caught. Nobody gets in trouble. Uh, they don't care on any fronts anymore. And they come out and go, yeah, we're torturing people. Yeah, we'll secretly arrest you. The CIA director comes out and says, yeah, we're listening to everybody without warrants. Folks, it's illegal for the CIA to even operate domestically, much less be saying, yeah, we spy on you at a public tech conference and laughing about it and saying all your appliances, you're paying for new tech in them to track you and the smart meters. Ha ha. You know, five years ago, the smart meters won't control your house. Oh, yeah, we're going to control your temperature and it spies on you. Now, shut up. This is an attempt like a pimp breaks a young prostitute to literally break our will. I don't think it's working. In fact, I know it's not. I mean, the previous record was like 2 million guns sold in one month. Uh, what was that, three and a half years ago? When Obama was first getting in, now I saw a number of 5 million in one month. Uh, three of the major manufacturers have said, we can't sell guns, one for six months, one for a year. They're that backordered. I mean, all of this is going on. Most of the military I talk to are awake. A lot of the police, and that's what's happening. Because people, before me, I don't need any thanks as, as Doug's thanking me. Others saw this from the inside and talked about it. I mean, I heard people 20 years ago when I was first waking up saying there's plans to bring in foreign troops. And I'm like, Admiral Yamamoto said that there'd be a, somebody with a rifle behind every blade of grass. The Japanese knew that, but not if it's posing as our own government and, and responding to a stage crisis like economic or nuclear or biological. And then there's all these White House memos by Shapiro and others saying, Mr. President, a new Oklahoma City or 9-11 will help us take over. And then other memos that even, that even Glenn Beck covered, and by the way, that's what got him fired, was when he said they're planning and pointed at Obama, a new Oklahoma City. Fox is like, Beck, you're off the air. That's it. Get out of here. And I had that from Fox sources. Boy, that caused a big uh, furor when I had those sources. And now I don't have one of those sources. I, I have some other sources, though. The point is that, that there is an attempt. They're thinking about doing this. But 
it's a catch-22. If we expose them, they get scared because they're criminals and want to carry it out. But if we don't expose them, they, they go ahead and do it. So then why do we expose it? Because at least people are awake. At least we know they're coming to our house. And I mean that literally and figuratively. They would like to have this implosion. They would like to have this race war. But the Trayvon Martin thing didn't go the way they wanted. I think they're going with a model they use in the Soviet Union and other areas. I don't think it's going to work. I don't think it's going to work. Uh, now, if they launch a war, people tend to get patriotic uh, and think that a war is patriotic and get behind that and kind of shut up and go along with it. But the plans to go around and arrest political dissidents and uh, people that they think are leaders across the political spectrum, that is going to result in massive resistance. And again, I'm not some macho guy that's like, let's just have a war with the military and police. I know, by the way, they're going to lose that war, but they're meant to, you see. And then I see NLE09, all these Washington Post and admitting, oh, foreign troops are going to help fight American terrorists and uprisings. That's now in hundreds of publications. So it's gone from being a secret program and training videos we got from Cooperative Nugget, 93, 95, 96, and urban warfare drills I went to after that. And generals announcing you're the forces of the New World Order and training in mock U.S. towns. I had to go see this myself and went and in some cases had to infiltrate uh, you know, I'm not going to get into all of it, but uh, well, you've seen the footage. The point is to show you this information. So I knew there was a program under Clinton to do this, but now it is going into an operational phase. Is my point? And I know I'm ranting, Doug. If you've got time, we'll keep it a little bit in the next hour because I'm taken away from it here. But uh, please don't thank me anymore. Just break down what your intel is, how all these uh, dots connect, and then I'm going to give the number out: 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Give us more of what your sources. I know you have a lot of them. What else they're telling you on multi fronts? But you were getting into how they plan to roll this out. What about that question? Will we be able, if we expose this enough, to, to cause them to not be able to implement this? Great question. That's the only reason my source came to me with this information and said, look, get the word out there, because if we don't, if we don't do anything, then it, it's almost a done deal. But if we can start talking about it, start exposing it, perhaps they will take a step backward. And what we talked about, and this is extremely important, what my, and my, my source uh, made sure that uh, he wanted me to mention this. Uh, Alex, you recall uh, the Thanksgiving 2010 and 20, uh, 2009, when, uh, when they, or 2010, I believe it was, when the TH, uh, TSA, um, stood down with the body scanners uh, because of the opt-out day, the protest. November 2010, you. yes, sir. Okay, now, they, they looked at that, and, and that bothered them tremendously. There were multiple meetings about this, and I'm telling you, your program caused, and your exposure caused them to step step back and, 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 and do this. And drudge, too. Exactly. Well, well here's the thing. This, uh, the whole TSA security theater... And this is what people need to understand. Uh, if the average American will put up with being sexually groped and nuked at, at, at an airport or just to travel or get, go into a mall or a stadium or just to fly, they'll accept almost anything. That is their mindset. And it, that, that's why that had such an adverse effect on them and, and sort, of, sort of sent them back if, uh, in time. Uh, they didn't expect the reaction. Uh, they expected everyone to be gropadopes to this point now. Now that, that it, it, it's, again, the conditioning has, has, has made everyone gropadopes. And according to my source, they're saying, okay, now that we got people back in line and people back accepting the fact that they've got to be sexually molested, now we can go forward. Okay, now, so, so again, if everyone stood up and said, no, we're not going to submit, we're not going to comply, that would certainly set their timetable back. But that was one particular point in time when, when the DHS brass, Pistoli in particular, being the head of the TSA, was absolutely outraged, according to the information we have. Uh, and this came from someone who was very close to Pistoli at the time. If you'll let somebody grab your wife's breast and your genitals and molest your children and right. laugh at you and pull them aside while they cry, which the, the, I mean, I've seen it myself, they get off on it. If you'll put up with that, you'll let them come to your house and search and set up a checkpoint and take you away. And that's what this is, is prisoner training. Exactly. Yeah, it's it, it, all of this has